Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, Bless Deacon Abiel here. We are here in Kumasi, Ghana, and I am completely blown away. As you can see behind me, we have the new school. It's in construction. It's being built from the ground up. Everybody's putting their brick in, y'all. It's your turn. Donate, donate, donate. As you can see where your money go. We're not pocketing your money. We're not driving expensive cars. We are doing the work most I got put in our heart to do. Just like in the book of Nehemiah. You guys out there in all the countries watching, you've been the key to this taking place. Without your donations and your help, we wouldn't be where we're at now. You understand? The Lord says, as you know in Ezekiel, build sanctuaries. This is the first of many Lord's world that we're building. Put your brick in. We need your donations. We need your help. As you all see, this right here is fulfillment of prophecy. The scripture says that this gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached to the whole world as a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. What you see right here is fulfillment of prophecy. So put your brick in, twiddle me your thumbs. Those of you all that's not here, ain't boots on the ground, you have a way to help. Our brothers from Israel United in Christ, IUIC. Uh, good, to be, uh, good to have you around where we have our guest, Officer Barakel and um, Officer Mika. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Good evening. Okay, you're welcome. Glad to have you around on board here. Thank you, thank you for the listeners this evening. Okay, thank you. Um, this evening we'll be talking about the solution to oppression. Yes, sir. Okay, solution to oppression. I don't know before we commence or talk about oppression, you know, some people are one of some of our listeners could probably be like, okay, what's oppression? What's the standing about it? And how that when you have united uh, Israel united in Christ, they might be like Christ, George, and oppression. Sorry, in 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 in, in Lima's understanding, what can you describe as oppression? Oppression is suffering. That's God's that's you being punished for breaking God's law and commandments. So the suffering of our people in Nigeria is oppression, which is by the hands of God Almighty Himself for disobeying His commandments. So are you saying oppression is probably a punishment because you disobeyed or you flattered some law? Is that what you're saying? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Because actually, what I you know what everyone believe about oppression should be probably because uh, a situation whereby people by position and hierarchy have been using or, or abuse power over people, over the masses, that's everyone understanding about um, uh, oppression. But now from your own angle now, uh, talking about it uh, from your own uh, description, if let me ask, are we oppressed? Yes. Nigerians are oppressed and we're going to read some of the oppression of not just Nigerians, but our people as a whole worldwide. We're going to read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 33. I want all the listeners, all the listeners listening, read along. We're reading Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 33. Your oppression is documented in the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up your cocoa, your diamond, your gold, your rubber, your timber, and every single natural resource that belongs to your land shall a nation, another nation, which you did not know at first, they will eat them up. Read. And thou shalt on, be only oppressed and crushed always. And this nation will only oppress you and they will only crush you always. That's what the Bible says. Let's read it for them in your world. It were Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. A so ati at a book boy Iwo osi je eni je kiki eni inilara at eni temole ni ba bobo. So, you got to was on here. Go 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 to get it out. What all that is in there? I want only the loony. I want my jet. I want them a wani, 
isale a ma wa ni 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 ile awon de ma wa soke to lo wa se so niyan eh iko ti wo wa so ina sale wa mu pada wa na so won to nse lori ede nigeria wi pe awon kan wa ehun la won kan na ti wa se kini lo ti wa nje la won ti o leto abi ti won je telo mi mo ti won verse 42 this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 42. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thy that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The Chinese, the Lebanese, the Arabians, the Europeans that are within your own country, they shall get up above you very high. And what's gonna happen to you? and thou shalt come down very low and you will come down very low indians and chinese and lebanese and arabians are higher us as a people in nigeria you will not hire them going to their country that will not happen there is no nigerian that's running anything in china there is no nigerian that's running anything in lebanon there is no nigerian that's running anything in saudi arabia but they come into your country and they provide jobs for you. They provide electricity and bridges and tolls and roads for you. That's oppression. Why? Because you fail to keep those commandments. Let's read it for the Nyoba. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Ale jotimbe la re, yo ma gaju o lo si waju ati si waju. I wo si ma di eni re si le. Siwaju ati siwaju. Ko 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 ni di kantu shala ye. Bobo ale jo to wa ni arin re. Oh my God, Jello. You want them a wa ni ile. Tiko ba ye ni. Then this gospel may not be for you. Ah, it's quite insightful because I I I never thought of having a, an answer of such to operation described well in the bible even that can be related to what is actually going on and what we have within ourselves i wanted to ask you before that why are we oppressed i felt the answer has been, that that question has been answered earlier and you said you discovered that, okay because we didn't take to the commandment of god because we failed and flattered the commandment and the will of god okay let's move on uh if i was i would say how does faith in god relate to oppression okay uh, Hey, I'm for all like by Luju at your race, yeah. Be alone, Kini Bashapo, to a larry, Majid. Can you please uh, illustrate that for us, sir? Huh? Isaiah chapter 29. <clears throat> Let's go to Isaiah chapter 29. Because many of our people they go to church. If we go down the highway, you will see about a hundred churches, okay? And in this hundred churches, None of them have the solution to the problem. This is where your faith comes in. Because you have to serve the Lord as He has commanded us. Isaiah chapter 29 and read verse 13. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. This is where our faith relates to our oppression. This is how the two correlates. Our fear has to be taught to us. We have to learn our fear of God as this Bible has said, not as how our general overseer says, not as how our bishop says, or our deacon, or this so-called father says, you have to fear God as the Bible have said. I'll give you an example. Do Christians uh, uh, eat catfish? Yes, they do. Do Christians eat pork? Yes, they do. Do Christians celebrate birthdays, New Year's, Christmas, Easter? Yes, they do. Which one of those things did God command them to do? None. Zero. But they will say, I can pray over these foods and I can eat it. So if you refuse to follow God's commandments, he gets angry, he gets mad, and he will punish you. And he's not going to come down and punish you. He will send other nations to punish you. That's how God does it. Let's read it from the Isaiah 29 and verse 13. 
eyini iwe Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13 nitori na oluwa wi pe ni won ti awon eniyan yi ti nfi enu won fa mommy ti won si nfi ete won yin mi sugbon ti okan won jina si mi ti won si nberu mi ni pa ilanu eniyan ti ako won mhm so ta se nfi oluwa niye ti eniyan se ko wa la se nberu e a beru oluwa ti o mu se ko wa okay um, let me ask this question because uh, we are down line now. Okay, uh, is it that we don't need to know? According to the institution, some people are there that we we reserve to know more about these things than us that knows about this teaching than we do. Like you mentioned, our pastors, our general overseers, and the leaders in church and the, uh, in the ministry. So are you seeing? And again, when they, when they review all these books to us, there's a way of, okay, I have a revelation. When I was in the book of Isaiah, there's a revelation. There's an in-depth teaching I received. I need to let you know. So at that point, is it, is, it, is it that we don't need to go along with those things? Just stick to what we read in the Bible and do away from those uh, insightful or personal revelation from the general overseers and leaders in the church. None of them have any personal revelation. They're all liars. Every single one of them, they're liars. All we're asking for is practical solutions, okay? We want employment to increase. We want our roads to be, to be good. We want uh, uh, security to improve. These are the practical solutions that the people want. But guess what? We are not in this country to receive any one of those things. This country was designed to oppress us. Jerusalem is our homeland until we begin to cry to the Lord to take us back to our homeland, until we begin to remember who we are, we will forever, forever, forever remain oppressed. And I'm going to show you that. Get me uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and I want verse 14. This is a very famous Christian passage. But they always, they, once again, with their lips, they say it, and they read it, but they don't understand what they're reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 let's read verse 14 yes the book of second chronicles second Chap chronicles sorry the book of second chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 if my people which are called by my name stop the first thing you must do if you want to be saved from oppression you have to know what God calls you God calls you an Israelite. That's your biblical name. Nigeria is not in the Bible, Ghana, etc., etc. You must call yourself an Israelite according to the Bible. Read. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. The next thing you must do is accept that you have broken God's laws and humble yourself. Read on. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. You see that you must turn from Christmas. You must turn from New Year, from birthday, from Easter. You must turn from eating catfish, from eating pork, from eating crayfish. All these things that are a sin unto God. You have to turn away from them. Read. Then will I hear from heaven. So guess what? If you're eating catfish, God does not listen to you. If you eat crayfish, he doesn't listen to you. If you celebrate Christmas, he doesn't listen to you. If you celebrate New Year's, he doesn't listen to you. Read and will forgive their sin only then when we turn away from our sins then he will forgive us read and will heal their land and only then and only then is god going to bring healing to us as a people read if let me go over ti won ba si wa oju mi ti won ba si je pada kuro ninu ona buburu won nigba na ni emi o gbo lati orun wa emi o si dare ese won ji emi o si wu ile won san so koko ni pe e gudo e gudo fi e se ni sile eh please i want a more elaborate information about these things because uh, we are hearing from you now okay if you're eating catfish if you're eating pork you know how many people will find it very difficult to, to understand and be like catfish that we do eat normally so what is the attachment of catfish to sin catfish to more pork to more 
to you lot of the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. These are the commandments of God. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Don't don't barely know me. Read. Whatsoever hath fins and scales. If it has fins and scales, like tilapia has fins and scales, read. In the waters and in the seas and in the rivers shall ye eat. You, you, you are allowed to eat those, read. And all that have not fins and scales. Does in. catfish have scales? Yes or no? Uh, no. No. So if they do not have either fin or no scale, scales. read. In the seas and in the rivers. Uh huh. Of all that move in the waters uh -huh. and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be an abomination unto you. That's crystal clear. Okay, I, I, I got that. But now that will drive me to the next question now about that. I That was read from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But there's this particular belief and doctrine that that, okay, in the New Testament, um, they, 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 there's this uh, grace upon us after uh, when Christ came around, came on board. So that the, which means we should do away with all this, uh, probably do away with some of these commandments because of salvation. What's your say on that, sir? Well, God's first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other God before me. According to your interpretation, now I'm allowed to have another God before God because I'm under grace. Am I correct? Because I'm under salvation. <laughs> no, 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 no. Am, I, am I correct? Am yes. I allowed to have another God before God because of grace? I'm not allowed to have another God. Am I allowed to kill because of grace? Okay. Am I allowed to steal because of grace? So, are you not saying this born down to every other thing according uh, that has to do with God? the belief, faith, and the doctrine from the Old Testament, the commandment. You have to keep the commandments of God. It's just that simple. There is nowhere in the Bible that it tells you not to keep God's commandments. The book from the beginning all the way to the end is about the keeping of God's commandments. That's where we've missed the mark. Eh, today I want to call the boy, I did that, and he retired, don't fat that, don't swan quiet, you know, and then we pray. One year I want to open to one, you know, Eh, grace period get your way together she understand so gege be bi to luwa o wo li Okay, I will give you grace period. My for any grace period, Lati get everything together. Romans chapter six and verse fifteen. I think I can hear about Romans six and verse fifteen. Honorable Lord, let me let you know I want Israel united in Christ. I U I C. Any people that think we're going to have oppression, tell me if we want to ban it. I want to pass a baby. Ori <laughs> Ki amari. She go. Ki amari. She a a a a a a magbe. 
kama kama she nitori awa ni ola be ori ofe ori abele ofe o so pe a je kama ri no let it o to ba je she ese ni eyi ti o ba kin sese ki sese ori ofe be ori ofe o be ah god is kini agbodo jina sese ah oda okay now because of our time i will want us to just portray on this uh, what is the solution mm-hmm. to oppression Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day mm-hmm. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Chego, did you hear that? Yeah. When we begin to keep God's commandments, then and only then he's going to set us back into our right place, which is above all the nations that are on the earth. Ejaka can do over. Iwe Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Yo si she bi wo pa fa ba le gbo ohun Oluwa Olorun re. Lati ma ki yesi ati se ase re gbogbo ti mo pa fun wo ni oni nje Oluwa Olorun re yo gbe oga ju gbogbo orilede aye lo to se ni ni to se ni so that line the solution is echoing the voice and the commandment of God so once we do that we are will be out of oppression 100% eh o da o won so ni wi pe ta ba ti le gbo won Olorun ta se se ife ohun to lo won fe ta se pa won fe e mo e gbogbo ifo lagba ni loju iko ni si nbe mo olohun a si gbe wa soke ti ipo to ye ka jo wa abi be ko be ni to se ri ni ya ti bible se ko ni ya to de se ri ni ya ta ba ka deuteronomy a eje ka tu wo won mo won mo won mo revelation 22 and verse 14 last book last chapter eje ka wo boya o change did anything change let's see revelation 22 and verse 14 the book of revelations chapter 22 and verse 14 blessed are they that do his commandments so blessed are they that do his commandments not that read or hear his commandments but those who do his commandments read that they may have right to the tree of life mm-hmm. and may enter in through the gates into the city right ejeka kan yo na iwe ifiyan chapter 22 verse 14 so igba to so pe iboku ni awon to nfo aso won abi be to nfo aso won mi you wash yourself clean by keeping the commandments that's what he's saying that's all he's saying ah agboye agboye da da hey now you, you you let us understand that. okay fine if we are to do it with the commandment because of the old testament to, to salvation now in revelation is to come back and let us know that we must keep to his commandment meaning or interpreting that if there was salvation that is above sin or that or under the influence of the salvation we can actually go against the commandment of god then here is a reminder to let you know you still need to keep it after reading all the new testament mm-hmm. with the um, mm-hmm. salvation preaching and everything you still need to do what to keep with the commandment of god only thing i said on the week way eh ninu we ifiyan le to ke ninu we olorun ta ba mu lati ibere ninu ma die mu atijo to fi mo ma die mu isin wi pe e ba ti mun kori ta ba ni pori ofe ko nbe ta le tara e ma dese ninu iwe ifiyan le to ke ninu bi pe le gbo olorun to to a fi die mu le wi pe ninu gbo te ba nse nko e daju wi pe e npa awon ofe mi mo to ti tu mo si pe lale to ni ibi ta foro ti si wi pe ba se le kuro ninu eh if o la gba ni loju ta mo si oppression is just to keep the commandment of god is that what we are having as a this thing tonight sir keeping to the commandment of god as a solution to oppression that's correct because oppression was by the hands of god himself oluwa fun are lo fi owe lo fi gbe wa si eru eh lo fi gbe wa si le so ta ba ti bere si ma se ofe e o ma gbe wa soke ah o da no ani le ri tori ijoba akoko la le to ni eh labala bi ta tin ba lejo awon iko lati israel united 
in Christ. I you I see and you be an at my repeating your letter on it. Um officer Barakel, your parting shot before you leave tonight, sir. Yes, uh, if you want to reach us, our telephone number is 0813-525-6941. Once again, 0813-525-6941. Or you can call 0907-879-0438. 0907-879-0438. You can get us on WhatsApp. Or on Telegram, you can also visit our website, israelunite.org. Israelunite.org. Thank you. Nation is men leading by example.